Okay, welcome to <coughs> another standard video. So this time I'm playing Zipper Bauer in another standard game. This time I have white. Again, we got straight into the action and he's played d6, which is looking to go into a filler door or perhaps a perk as well. So again, we've been doing some preparation and this is to help me get into those middle game and end game ideas. So I'm going to play d4. This is what I've been learning against this and normally, uh, knight f6 or g6, but he's playing knight bd7 first, which is interesting. Uh, if play knight c3, he's probably going to play e5 and go into some kind of Hanham Philidor position, which I've also been uh, practicing as well. Um, just thinking of the right move order here. Again, it's usually move order that's tricky. Uh, you may want to play a hippo, in which case I want to leave c4, f4 open. So I've got three pawns in the center. Okay, so it's an interesting position. Um, interesting move order as well. Uh, I think I'll play knight c3. That fits in with a lot of ideas I play. Um, I like to play bishop e3, h3, f4, that kind of plan. And the perk. Well, this is going to go into a standard Philidor position. In that case, I will take the opportunity, probably just play knight f3, normal developing moves. Nothing too tricky, I suspect. I expect him to play knight f6, in which case we get a standard Philidor position. He's going to take, I think that's also a good move. I do have the option of taking with the queen here as well. Um, the reason is he can't play knight c6 and kick away my queen. So that might be another possibility to consider. Knight takes is probably the more standard way of approaching these positions. If I take with the queen, I can possibly play bishop f4, castle queenside quickly, and then look to go from there, which does look interesting. I think I want some practice of these normal kind of Philidor positions, so I'm going to take with the knights. Again, I think sometimes it comes down to style. Okay, so he plays knight f6. Um, bishop c4 is my first thought here. Um, the normal trick with knight takes e4 doesn't work here because d5 isn't protected by the queen in this case so i think i will play bishop c4 normal looking move bishop e7 and then my castle like so the castles as well that makes sense let me get a normal kind of position here um Generally, you don't want to do too much in the opening. You just want to play your pieces to the right squares. Again, there are plans, things like uh, f4 here. But I don't think there's any rush to do that. Uh, rook e1, knight e5. I can play bishop back to e2 and then kick away with f4. A convenient moment. Generally, black plays these kind of c6, a6 moves to try and kick my bishop. Uh, let's just play rookie one, sensible developing move. He does play knight e5, at least that's something I've considered. Um, bishop e2 seems sensible, covering g4. He has got three pieces on there, so he can play something like knight g4. But this seems sensible. I don't really want the bishop on... Do I really want the bishop on b3? Mm, possibly. Possibly I could play bishop b3. Do you only want an a2 in these positions after you've played f4? Okay, let's play bishop e2. Okay, I feel like I've been move ordered somehow in this position. I've got to a, a worse version for white than it should be, but there we are. Play what you're given. Interesting to see what black plays next. Yeah, something like c5 is possible. 
Again, the key problem with that, it weakens d6, but you do get some central control. So, he's playing very quickly, so I want to keep the pressure up. Knight f3 is the obvious move, I don't think any other move looks good. Knight b5 doesn't actually threaten anything and puts my knight in a bad square. Now I may play h3 or bishop f4. Probably bishop f4. I'm getting a piece out. I'm actually threatening to win the pawn. And he plays knight g6. Interesting. So anticipating that kind of idea. Now bishop e3, knight g4 is probably irritating. So I probably need to play h3 before I play bishop e3. Alternatively, I'm sure there's a plan in the Philidor where you can play b3 and bishop b2 as well. You can develop your bishop there. But the issue is he's got that knight f4 square if I ever develop my bishop out that direction. I think I just want to play h3, bishop e3, queen, probably to d2, rook a d1 and go from there really. I don't think there's any need to do anything else. It'll be interesting to see how black develops the position. Okay, a6, I can play b5, which I certainly don't want to happen on any account, so I think that's a quick obvious move I can play. He may play b6 possibly. Try and develop bishop to b7. Now I've played h3. That seems reasonable. Plays bishop d7. Perhaps he's trying to force through b5. Which he can't at the moment. But I can just take. So I think I'll just continue my normal plan. Bishop b3, queen b6. Probably something I shouldn't be frightened of. A5, queen takes b2. Hmm. Don't have a great answer to that. I could just play rook b1 and stay solid. I can even play a5 here as well. And if he plays b5, take on passant, leaving with a weak a6 ball. I suspect he wants to play bishop c6 and just put some more pressure on on e4, in which case I can then play bishop f. Oh, I can't play bishop f1. Bishop e3, bishop c6, queen d3. Maybe a move. Or I could play bishop f1 now. Seems a bit weird to move the bishop back three times. That's certainly something to consider. Bishop f1, bishop c6. Hmm. Bishop e3, bishop c6, queen d3. He can bring his knight e5 again. Hmm. Bishop e3, bishop c6, queen d3, knight e5, take, take. I do have the option then moving my queen somewhere else. Like queen c4, for example, attacking the c5 pawn. It seems natural to play this move, so I might even have this maneuver as well. I'll bring my knight around to c4, which is quite common. So I think I'll play bishop e3. I do have this knight d2 c4 resource.
I'll just let him know that he's been recording my YouTube channel. Okay, Rook C8. Okay, I don't. Hmm. What's his idea there? Still got this covered. Do you like his knight d2, knight c4 plan? I play queen d3, play c4, maybe that's his idea. Queen d2 blocks that kind of plan. I might try and play queen d3 to entice c4 so I can exploit the d4 square. So queen d3, c4, queen d1, and then I've got access to that square. And this pawn is hanging if he plays bishop c4. Okay, so let's continue with that plan. Again, I may not want to play a5 because if I want to play rook a d1, it leaves that hanging. Eventually, I want to tap the d6 weakness, but there's no rush. That bishop is not obviously a good piece, um, it's blocked in by literally everything. It'd be interesting to see what black plays next. Rook e8 would seem sensible. Rook e8, bishop f8. If I was black shoes, I'd probably do that. But it does leave an annoying pin, maybe, after bishop g5 and create some weaknesses. Still feel I didn't play this in the right way, but um, it can't be that bad for what. I may play uh, queen c4 as a move. Okay, so he's going to go for it. He's going to go for uh, b5. Seems weird to do that with the rook on c8, however. But he may push c4 like an intermediate move. So it's definitely possible. Hmm. He's looking to get off that e4 pawn eventually. That's the idea. I don't have to take it, of course. So, knight d5. I don't want to open up. I want to open up the rook. Okay, so he's going to take it normally. Maybe after knight b5, he wants to play c4, and I lose a piece. That might be his idea. I can't actually take on that. Okay, now play ninety five. But after takes, don't really want to take with the poor necessarily. Or B three. So actually I am threatening then to take the pawn on c4. B3 does weaken this uh, long diagonal. So there might be something there. B4 might play, after b3 might play b4 himself.
Okay. This may not be a good move, but I'm going to play B3. So I'm actually am threatening now to take the pawn. You can play b4, but I can probably play knight d5 in that case. Knight d5 takes, queen takes, bishop c6, queen d3. And if he ever plays b4, he leaves this square weak. So after b4 and some exchanges, then this knight can then sneak into c4. It's a lovely square. So, interesting if he plays in that way. And I'm actually threatening now to take the pawn. Disadvantages it does weaken the dark squares, but you can't play a bishop ever to this square here and threaten along here. Okay, so he does go b4. I will now play knight d5. I expect him to take it. I can even consider taking with the pawn as well. I think I want to keep pressure on this pawn here. I'm going to take with the queen. He does have bishop f6 now, this long diagonal. But I can get some nice play bringing the rook to one of these two squares here. Really trying to attack that d, d6 weakness. Okay, so he plays there. He plays queen back, protecting the pawn. Uh, so again, I've got this idea of bringing my knight into c4, which would be a very nice plan. I do have to watch out for a knight e5 move of some kind at some point. Okay, queen c7, connecting the rooks, makes sense. Hmm. And the queen's not in a good spot, this is the problem. I'm going to play bishop g5 because he takes. I would like to get my knight into c4. Smoothly. I don't particularly like my position, but hmm. knight d2, knight e5. Where can I move my queen to? Queen's kind of stuck a bit. Well, bishop f1. It frees up this square then for the queen. I don't really want him playing bishop f6, so in exchange off dark square bishops, even though it's his bad bishop, it does weaken this pawn somewhat. So it's kind of a weird move. Don't know, just struggling to get my pieces in the right places.
Hmm, I can take with the queen, I forgot about that. Ah, oh, queen takes. Yeah, that's just hanging, isn't it? Bad game so far, bad game. I'm going to hope after queen takes. Okay, place of the rooks, that makes me much happier. Well, a bit happier. Okay, he's going to get his knight to e5. This is true, but I can then play at least now queen g3. Give me a bit of space and then push with f4. So it gives me a little bit of a little bit of leeway. I could even consider something really ugly like F3 as well to defend the pawn. I mean, rookie eight. Rookie eight, probably. Probably bishop f1, maybe. Rookie eight, bishop f1. Rookie eight. He's got this lovely f4 square as well for the knight. I mean, it's just. It's not looking pretty. Okay, this I'm not so concerned about. So I can play queen g3. So I think black let me off the hook here a little bit. So you can get f4 in. Bishop f3, knight c4, and get those moves in. I'll show those on the board. Bishop f3, so f4, and bishop f3, and knight c4. I think I'll be doing quite well. Okay, so maybe he wants to play rook g6. But his knight's going to run out of squares if he's not careful, so f4 seems like the move to play. You can play rook g6. Gaining a tempo. But I can just bring, bring my queen back to f2. And let's play bishop f3. There might be some situation where the rook's even trapped on there. So let's be a bit careful. Okay, so that's what we expected. Back to F2. I can just secure this E4 pawn, Bishop F3. Say my pieces are getting a bit more into life. Knight C4 again. I haven't forgotten about that plan. And there might be some stage where I can play e5 and drop my knight into d6. Okay, so I play knight c4 immediately, or I can play bishop f3 first, which seems more sensible to me. And now it's my rook, then to defend. You've got three defenders now. One, two, three. Now I'm going to argue that this... Rook looks menacing, but it's kind of offside. I still do have some good trumps. I've got this lovely 
open file for the rook it may be useful at some point my general plan is to look to play knight c4 maybe then e5 and knight d6 might be chances when this knight moves away that this c5 will be weak as well There is a weakness on f4, so after d5 for example, I think I can just take, yeah I think it's too dangerous, too risky to give me that pass pawn on d5. Okay, so plans for black could be queen b7, put more pressure on that pawn, but then knight c4 comes with more force. This c2 pawn is obviously not the best pawn in the world, but my pieces seem in good positions now. Possibly there's even bishop g4 as well, because this diagonal could be awkward in certain circumstances. Well, that looks good black play. Knight f6 maybe? And that rook is really running out of squares. Again, when your opponent's thinking, you should be thinking on their time. I think in most situations I want to play knight c4. d5 isn't really a threat. I can just take. Okay, so he plays knight f6. Makes logical sense, but a lot of those squares are covered by the bishop. Uh, knight c4 is the immediate move I want to play. After d5. You know, take, take with the bishop. But I've also got knight e5, so knight c4, d5, knight e5 which could be awkward actually. Yeah, so I like this knight c4 move. This is what I want to play, play it quickly. Put one pressure on the opponent. Hmm, I'm just thinking, could there be sacrifices on e4? No, I should have thought about that. It's always one of those things. As soon as you make the move, then you start thinking about a tactical move that black can play. I could take with the rook though. Yeah, so knight takes e4, rook takes e4. Then I get two minor pieces for the rook. That's certainly very good. Okay, so he plays rook e8, which is what we expected. I think e5 looks a good move here. If he takes, take with the knight, that looks like could be winning some material actually. In the exchange. D5, I play knight d6, and that knight is a real pain on that square. I'm also threatening c5. If he doesn't do anything, I can just take on d6. So I think that's the move to play. So it's a good move to me. Taking doesn't work. D5 probably loses the C5 pawn after knight D6 or a sacrifice to exchange somehow. 
The knight could move, but then I had to take on d6. I think I'm doing very well now. It'd be interesting to see where I went wrong in the opening. I think I went for the wrong plan. I did talk about that b3, bishop b2 idea. Okay, so we looked at this, but again, it's giving up a very nice bishop here. I can't play an intermediate move because he's got rook takes g2 check, so I have to take the queen. If he takes the pawn, which I think he might, he has to actually, then I get my knight to a fantastic square on e5. That rook does look silly. We'll probably have to play rook h6, which is completely the wrong square. Now just look at all the alternatives. Can I take with the pawn? If I take with the pawn, where's the knight go? Actually, it's only got one square. It's got d7. But I think that's okay. F takes e5. Knight d7. In fact, that... My pawn could be quite weak in that situation. It allows this rook also to come back over laterally. And rook h6 is forced. So after rook h6. What can we play after rook h6? But rook a8, which does threaten take take knight g4, attacking the knight and attacking the rook at the same time. He's got rook e6, he gets a weakened structure out of that. We might have something better. Rook a8 looks nice. There's a clear threat involved. I think if it ever takes out of the queen, I can play knight d3, attacking the queen and attacking c5. And that rook is just completely out of play now. So I want to try and attack whilst that rook is trying to reorganize itself. Rook a8 is the move I'm looking at. I'm looking at queen moves as well. So like queen e3. Try and look at the weaknesses. But I like rook a8. He takes. That actually leads to mate, as far as I'm aware. I haven't got any checks or anything particularly aggressive. And I like this plan of rook takes, queen take, knight d3. Knight holds a lot of the uh, weaknesses in the position. Attacking c5, we've got moves like queen c6 or queen e3. You might be able to just win the c5 pawn, in which case the b4 pawn comes weak as well. And that rook is totally out of play. F7 is a weakness, so if he doesn't take, I might play rook a1 and rook a7. That looks very dangerous. If the knight moves anywhere, queen d5 is something to consider. Okay, what would black play here? It's very hard for the queen actually to defend the rook. Queen e7 goes into knight d3. Hmm, king f8 maybe? Hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, what do I do after King F8? King F8. Maybe I've got something like knight c4, because you're pinned, so then it forces you to then take on a8. So then maybe I could play that knight g4 move I was talking about. Hmm, that is a good point. Exploiting the bad position of the rook. Now forget about the pin. So you can't ever take on e1 because he's pinned. So knight g4 could be a realistic threat. Hmm. Okay, he plays queen e7, but I thought knight d3 just works here. Knight d3. Okay, knight d3, let's go through the attacks with So knight d3, if he takes an a8 check. Okay, then I'll definitely win the c5 pawn. Oh, I could just take the queen, actually. Rook takes a8, takes the queen. Takes down there, he can't actually take all the way. That just wins, knight d3. It looks like it just wins. Something else I was looking at that doesn't win direct, like queen d7, that's what I was looking at. Queen d7. Might just hold actually. Queen d7. Ah, oh, but I can take, take. And the rook comes back in. He's got to check on d4, so be careful. Ah, I am threatening checkmate if the queen moves away. Why is that at queen d5? And basically, you can't take it. Queen e4 for that matter. Queen d5, maybe the move. I've got 20 seconds. I think queen d5 does work. Nice shot if it does. Is knight or queen can't take it because it's mate on the back rank. If we take some a8, I can just take that with check and it's mate. Where does the queen move to to defend everything? Queen b5, maybe? Maybe queen b5 somehow holds but there must be a a win there somewhere queen e8 maybe queen d8 maybe and king f8 so close queen b5 queen c5 
and queen c5 works after that. So queen b5, queen c5, he takes, ah, the check. That's a problem. Takes a check. Queen b5, queen b7 maybe? Queen B5 is the only move I can see that keeps things going. I didn't even see this move. I can at least win a pawn. So let's just take that. I can take another pawn. I've got rookie seven as well. Rookie seven. Just take another pawn, that's sensible. So I'm just two pawns up. Okay, that traps his rook even further, it makes me much happier. I like to get queens off if I can. Keep it sensible. Two outside pass pawns is good enough to win with a badly placed rook. Queen e5, queen c2, queen takes f6, I don't think he can take knight because I've got checkmate in the back rank. This may just force off the queens. I think it does. And I'll probably take back with the rook because that pawn on f4 really does lock in this rook over here. I don't think there's any other way of protecting the knight. Oh, I speak too soon. Need to make a move. A quick check. I'm knocking this up, but he's got rook h5 now, which I did see, but couldn't see any better moves in the time trouble. He sees it, of course. Oh, 
on hanging C2 as well, what I'm doing. Yeah, there's no reason why I can't just take on C2, as he's just done. So disappointing. But anyway, let's carry on. Is Rick still trapped to play 95? Dropping his knight in, uh, trapping his rook in over here. Try and make something of the pass pawn. Not happy with my play. Now we've got the idea of maybe queen d4 and knight g4. We can still play rook f5 against that though. Maybe a better plan actually would be rook c1 and rook c7 just tacking on here. That might be the better plan to play. In any knight move is risky because I can play queen d4, threatening discoveries. But I like that rook c1, rook c7 plan. He checks on the back rank, I've got king h2. Ah, actually I've even got queen a7 here as well. Actually queen a7 could just be... Ah, uh, uh, but he can defend you uh, taking that pawn on b3. That's annoying. To be fair, I don't quite know what black plays here. Now he's running low on time as well. Okay, he does play knight d5. I thought that was risky because of queen d4. I think I stand by that as well. Watch out, there's no mate threat or something in that square. After f6, which might be the move to play. But like d7 maybe. F6, I could just take the knight. And be a pawn up. Two pawns up by them. F6, queen takes d5. F takes e5, rook takes e5. Now I've got the outside pass pawn in a queen ending, it's not ideal. This one I could probably play quite quickly. Okay, he plays back. Makes sense. Knight d7. He has rook f5. I think it's the only move. Ah, 
queen there. Interesting. So I could go into a rook endgame. Should be a win. It's a safe kind of game to play as well. Now this pawn needs protecting, so I can play my rook behind this appropriate time, which is what he's doing. Okay, now I don't want him to play h4 to limit my pawns. So g3. I assume king f5 here. Looking to play g4 and b4 at some point, not sure which order. Oh, I'll just play b2. Okay, how to win this? Play g4. Don't exchange off too many pawns. Just give me a bit of space. King cross. Oh, maybe this is a draw. Play a couple of checks, gain some time. Play rook here. I don't really want to be by the side, I want to get behind the pawn and push it, but uh, that's the only way to make progress.
Yeah, I think this is a draw. This is a shame, really. Okay, let's try a trick. Rook here, because he plays here, I can exchange off rooks, get the outside pass ball. So let's try a little trick. We'll try a trick again. There's a way I can force up my king to here. Also, we've got very good chances. At least now, these two pawns are protected by the rooks. It gives my king a bit more flexibility. Again, place king here, got rook there. That'll be a winning point end game. You might even play king to here. It might give me a chance to play rook to there, but I don't think that achieves anything. I think I offer the draw at this point, so I don't think I can make much progress. Okay, refusing to draw, I have no idea why exactly. And we'll take the draw at that point there. And we don't play another game. Let's go back. Okay, disappointing really in terms of performance. Play some decent moves, like 10 moves in the middle. But really, in terms of opening, without played, managed to get my pieces in the right position. And then go from there. Switch from GG, there we are. Let's have a look at what I could have done. So, we played this rap defense. Again, I don't think I've ever learned anything against it. Um, we'll keep the engine on as I go through it. So, play knight c3, e5, f4, maybe. Yeah, that would be more in keeping with my repertoire. I don't generally tend to play f4 against these things. Um, I play knight f3, which seems to be the most common move. Again, not sure, just play sensible moves. There are takes. Uh, queen takes, I did mention that as an option. Also mentioned knight takes, it's equivalent. With hardly any games in the database. Which is interesting. See, well, I could have done a little bit better. So knight, f, knight f6, again g4. There's very aggressive moves. Uh, bishop e2 being recommended here. I play bishop c4. Maybe it's the wrong kind of plan for the position. Let's see. Yeah, maybe bishop e2, since the bishop came back there anyway, would be a bit better. Okay, so bishop there, castle. 
Yeah, knight b6 I'm familiar with, and then you play the bishop back to e2, but he didn't play that. It's castled. Play rook e1. Seems fine. Okay, play knight e5, which I think is a rare move as far as I'm aware. Ah, and most people play bishop f1 rather than bishop e2. Okay. Again, I don't think I did anything too terrible. Bishop e2, c5. Okay, recommends me to put that back to d, uh, b3 rather than f3. Hmm. That seems to be a little bit better. It does allow me to play the f4 push, I guess. That's why b3 is probably better. Okay, but I don't think the hero play is too bad. H3, okay, move. A4, A, A6, A4, makes sense. Bishop D7. Yeah, and he likes this plan with b3, which I remember vaguely looking at when I was uh, going through my opening repertoire, but um, I should have stuck to my instinct, really, and gone with that. Got off to bishop e3. She's got a lot of pressure on that pawn. Yeah, and I think queen was misplaced on d3. I'd certainly say that was an error. Um, computer recommending bishop d3. I think knight d2, actually. If I can play that, it will be a good move to play. Looking to play my knight into c4. Might be a better idea. Which is not particularly liking that. Bishop d3. Or even a5. I mean, a5 just freezing the queen side for a moment. And then after bishop c6. Uh, maybe queen d3 is okay now because of that lack of c4 threat. Yeah, it's an opening I'll need to look at and see if I can find something a bit better there. Not particularly happy with my play, but yeah, Queen D3 seems to get in the way of everything developing really. B5. I thought he might play C4. That was my initial thought. And then Queen there and then Pawn takes. But yeah, it does give me a nice square for the knight on d4, which I saw in the game. I think, you know, the control of these squares here, here, here. A lot of good good control. Okay, so after that I played uh, b3. The computer recommended b4. Which has some logic to it as well. Yeah, and it played b4, knight d5. Yeah, I don't think this is anything for white. Took the queen to keep the weakness on there, but again, it's too much play against the uh, this pawn here. Yeah, something simple like rook e8. And it's just very hard to defend that pawn. No, I agree. I think this queen d, whole queen d3 idea wasn't a great idea in retrospect. I think I need to look at the whole whole line really from my point of view. Queen c7, bishop g5 seems an okay move. I think logically speaking it stops bishops coming to f6. I took and knight d2. Yeah knight f4 again could have been a good move and then yeah it sort of kind of let me off the hook really. I thought after getting queen g3 in I'm back in the game I'm a bit more comf comfortable I think. F4. Play queen to here. Ah, uh, see why I didn't like F2 because you can go for a repetition with rook F6. That's quite difficult to spot, I think. Knight coming eventually. Or G4. Very computer esque move, just charging things up the board. Yeah, I suppose F5 should now be considered. Now this knight is a little bit of distance away. So we see the knight here. It takes a little bit of time to get there, so maybe there is time for f4. 
Um, rook a d1 makes perfect sense. Going up on the d6 weak d6 weakness. Yeah, I, I, I saw this as soon as I played the move. But yeah, I thought I could take the rook, which is correct. So I get the extra tempo on the rook over here. That looks good. Um, is black supposed to play something different. Ah, d5. At that point, yeah, okay. I think that would be okay. Yeah, rook e5. And takes. Yeah. And I've got the pin along here. That seems okay. Yep, yeah, and he allowed me this e5 move, which, yep, yeah, as computer says, winning, but it looks very, very natural. And he had to take on there, well, not the best of a bad possibility, but my knight getting to that square is fantastic. Knight g4 immediately. Ah, yes, because he can't take on g4 after the capture in e1. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Because, yeah, as after this capture and capture, he can't take the knight because of the back rank. And say he moves this somewhere, then I've got the other back rank threat over on here. Yeah, that's that should be straightforward to see, really. Again, they've had the right idea, but again, as so often with tactics, it's all about move orders, just doing the moves in a slightly different order. Ah, that's annoying. Knight g4. Yep, nice tactic. I play rook a8, which is still winning. Play queen e7, and then stack the rooks on there. So I played knight d3. Again, you have to find a lot of good moves. You can still take that for the knight, so yes, yeah, A plays a random move, that's like C4. Ah, then rook A7. They can't take because I take on there. Queen here. Yeah, I've got something landing on yeah, something landing on C7 and that's that's game really, isn't it? And then there. That looks very hard to defend. Not entirely clear though. I thought 93 is a natural sort of move. Backward knight moves are always quite difficult to spot. Um, lining up there. Queen d7. Yeah, just recommends to take on c5 and ignore the check. Let's see why this is so dangerous. Though. Yeah. Yeah, that just loses. Yeah. But okay, if he plays king f1, he can't check me, which is important. And after king f8, take take. Hmm, why is that completely winning? Take take. Ah, and now. Can't play rook e6 because the knight is protecting it. He can't take that because of mate. And if he takes on there, is that just a spite check? Queen f1, e4, so go into corner, and then yeah, we have to give up the rook. Okay, but that was important to cover the e6 square because the knight takes c5. Okay, queen d5 is also winning. I thought that was quite a nice shot. I just couldn't see the rook through though. Okay, so on the right lines, take, take. I guess it'd be similar to the line we just saw. I take on c5 and just ignore the checks, basically. Yep, so it's again parallel to what we did there. Key thing is stopping rook e6. Yeah. So instead, I took on there. Rook e7, there's a lot of ways I could have improved. Still, this is fine. Rook e7. Yeah, you can't check out of that. 
That's the rookie seven. Okay, queen back. Yeah, and this looks very nasty. Can play. Uh, why did that not work? Ah, and I'm threatening on f8, yes. Okay, so he checks. Again, really low on time here, but yeah, I'm just giving that away that pawn for nothing. Saying c4, it's still not entirely clear. The winning strategy. Again, queen b8 is just a, a rushed move. Yeah, something quite assured like queen d4. Now you ask black what they're doing, so play rook f h5. And just start marching these pawns up. Let's say the rook comes out, something like this, for example. Okay, so we've got that vulnerability. Yeah, so the rook actually doesn't have many squares to go. Come to here. G4, same effect. So actually, the rook is trapped, even though it's got lots of room. On that uh, row there, actually, it's still kind of trapped. Now I kind of lost the thread of it again in time trouble, just trying to play safe moves. I've given up that pawn for nothing basically. I can still protect it now. Yeah, just losing the thread of the game. And then I went into this ending. Yeah, g4. I mean, that just. Sure, just wins. That just wins material. I mean, that, that's game over, isn't it? I mean, cg4. And then get into this ending, which is just a draw, basically. And we may play this first. Yeah, but this ending is just a draw and um, didn't do much much there to make it difficult for the opponent. So in some ways it was a disappointing game. There were plenty of tactical wins in that middle game when I was down on time. I simply didn't see the correct route. Again, you weren't looking for the most clear cut, but again, I think my calculation skills were particularly good in terms of exploiting the advantage, again, the opening wasn't great, but I managed to get pieces in the right places. Um, but yeah, just disappointing that, that stretch of 10 15 moves where there were many tactical shots I had. Knight g4 would have been clear cut and simply didn't get the right moves. So, a bit disappointing. Again, I think it shows up my, my weaknesses as a chess player, which is calculation skills and working in time trouble. And that's the key thing about this series, you know, that's why. I want to do these series to really just get some tactical practice in the middle game and convert these. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully I'll play a bit better in that middle game part next time. Again, please like and subscribe and share with everyone you know um, of my new chess series. Okay, bye-bye for now.